Your Product Rundown, brought to you by HobbyZone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. And by Call TV Man's Hobby Shop, carrying a wide selection of Star Wars, Star Trek, 2001, and other great science fiction models. Welcome to Fine Scale Modelers New Product Rundown, the video series that shows you inside the latest kits and accessories. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash, because always too, there are no more, no less. A master and an apprentice. Our first kit today is the latest version of Ravel Germany's 132nd scale ME262. This kit representing the single seat fighter is a development of the company's two seat night fighter released in 2016. Now this one shares many parts with that kit but it will undoubtedly be more popular because this represents the primary production version and can be built either as an interceptor or fighter bomber. Surface detail on the major airframe components is fine recessed panel lines and rivets as well as raised lap joints in places. Cockpit detail includes consoles, rear and forward bulkheads, side walls, seat, lower frame, control stick, pedals, and instrument panel. Forward of the cockpit is another bulkhead that backs the bay for four cannons with ammunition feeds and spent shell chutes. The cover can be posed open and the barrels extend through a nicely molded nose piece. Underneath is the nose gear bay. The cockpit wall and bulkheads form part of the main gear bay. The rest is formed inside the wing with front and rear spars with frames that fit into the center of the lower wing. The rest of the wings build from outboard lower sections and the upper sections all again marked with fine surface detail. The leading edge slats are designed to be post extended on the molded actuators as are the trailing edge flaps. Remaining control surfaces like the ailerons, rudder and elevators for the horizontal stabilizers are separate. The engine nacelles wrap around detailed engines with intakes, jet pipes, and the body of what's in between. Landing gear legs with nicely treaded tires and detailed gear doors finish the airframe. Optional racks under the nose can be fitted with fuel tanks or bombs of different sizes. Racks under the wings carry R4M rockets. Clear parts supply the windshield and its armored layer, two-part canopy, lights, and gun sight. Decals designed by AirDoc provide markings for two ME262s and the instructions show the camouflage well. There's a bunch of stencils, dials for the instrument panel, and seat harness. As usual with Ravel Germany kits, no swastikas are included. This big box is filled with details and should produce a good looking model. Yub nub. Why do I get the feeling you're going to be the death of me? The following segment is sponsored by Model Rectifier Corporation, distributors of Academy and Italeri model kits. Next up, we have Italeri's 172nd scale F-35B Lightning II. This is the short takeoff and vertical landing version of the F-35 designed to operate from smaller carriers like the HMS Queen Elizabeth or the American LHD amphibious ships. As such, it features a swiveling engine nozzle and a shaft-driven fan in the forward fuselage. Now, Italeri kitted the conventional F-35 a couple of years ago. Let's see what this kit has to offer. This is where the fun begins. Most of the airframe is divided into two parts. The upper fuselage combines raised and recessed detail. Most of the distinctive panel surrounds are represented as slightly raised. The part also includes the instrument panel shroud and molded detail on the cockpit sill. The lower fuselage half has similar surface detail. In addition, the nose gear bay, internal weapon bays, and vents I assume to be part of the vertical flight system are molded in place with a lot of mechanical and structural components shown. The fuselage sandwiches the engine with intakes that include the upper fuselage opening for vertical flight, front, and rear fans, and the nozzle. Optional jet pipes allow the variable nozzle to be posed down for vertical flight or straight back. The shaft driven fan is here too, including the duct, shaft, upper, and lower fan. The doors for the various engine openings have detailed interfaces, a trait shared by the doors for the gear and weapon bays. Nicely molded landing gear legs even have brake lines, and the wheels feature open hubs and brakes. Cockpit detail consists of a tub with molded consoles, three-part ejection seat, instrument panel, and controls. The vertical stabilizers are molded as single parts, as are the all-moving tailplanes. The flaperons are separate, but the leading edge flaps are molded in place. In addition to AIM-120C, AMRAMs, and GBU-31s for the internal bays, the kit supplies optional underwing pylons to carry GBU-12s and AIM-9X sidewinders. There's also a trolley to display the bombs off the model, a nice touch. Gold tinted clear parts supply the one piece canopy and the electro optical target system housing under the nose. Decals provide the instrument panel, seat harness, airframe, and weapon stencils and markings for three F-35s. 
one each Royal Navy, U.S. Marine Corps, and Italian Navy. Italy has crammed a lot of detail into its F-35 and it should build into a nice replica. I've got a really good feeling about this. Heading to the library for a second, Pen and Sword has a bunch of modeling manuals in its Tank and Landcraft series. If you're unfamiliar with these books, each 64-page softcover presents a history of the model with color profiles, model showcases, and other related modeling products. If you're stuck on a project, it's a chance for you to make a fresh start. And help you stay on target. In the Tankcraft line, we have Dennis Oliver's book about British Army Achilles and M10 tank destroyers in Northwest Europe. The volume includes a timeline, list of regiments, profiles, four builds, kit roundup, and technical details to help you build better models. Sticking with British subjects, here's a book about the Chieftain by Robert Jackson. In addition to a history of the Cold War tank's development and variants, and colorful camouflage diagrams, the book has four showcased builds and more than 10 pages of kits, including an extensive discussion on improving Tamiya's Chieftain to build an Iranian tank. Robert Jackson turns his attention to one of the Chieftain's chief adversaries, the T-54 and 55, in the next book including a discussion of the tank's many variants and operators, which leads to some terrific camouflage patterns. After four build showcases, Jackson concludes with a review of newer kits in 135th and 172nd scale, and a survey of the tank in action. Dennis Oliver returns for the next three books, covering Panthers on the Western Front in 1945, Sturmgeschutz 3s and 4s, also on the Western Front from 1944 to 45, and the Tiger I on the Eastern Front in summer 1943. These three volumes share styles and formats with timelines, several pages of color profiles, kit roundups, and models. Three Panthers, three Stugs, and four Tigers. As if those aren't enough, there are also books about the British Challenger 1, centered around four showcases, a Landcraft volume about the Jeep in World War II by Lance Cole, featuring four builds, and Robert Jackson's study of the Bren gun carrier with four showcases. These are not exhaustive books about a subject, but they are perfect if you're interested in a vehicle and want to learn more. And there's plenty of inspiration in here, too. Someday, you're going to be wrong. I just hope I'm there to see it. The following segment is sponsored by Model Rectifier Corporation, distributors of Academy and Italeri model kits. Uh, so should we move on? We better, for Director Casey's sake. He's most displeased by our apparent lack of progress. Okay then, well we've got something different here. It's Academy's New God Phoenix, the vehicle at the center of Gatchaman 2. This is the sequel TV show to the popular 1970s anime series, better known to American audiences as Battle of the Planets. I love this show as a kid. I don't know how it holds up these days, I haven't seen it in a while, but the techs and ships were always cool. What's really great about this kit is Academy's use of multicolor plastic, which makes this kit a little bit more accessible to people who have less experience modeling. Plus, it comes with an LED lighting set and movable components reminiscent of Gundam kits. Let's take a look. The body of the ship is molded in white plastic. The upper section has fine recessed panel lines and rivets, as does the lower fuselage, which also features landing gear bays with molded structural elements. These parts sandwich engines, including sharply molded fans that mount behind open grills, with a rear housing for exhaust nozzles that get clear red inserts. The nose builds from a couple of white components that attach to a blue section. A black brow and red plastic finishes the aircraft's distinctive birdhead nose, tipped by a yellow beak. Dark gray parts provide mechanical details, as well as actuators for hatches and moving sections that open, often with the aid of springs, to reveal the smaller vehicles used by G-Force. The rest of the craft comprises inner and outer sections of the posable wings that have separate control surfaces, white and red vertical tail parts, red elevator, wing root hangers, and the blue tail boom. The massive landing gear legs, capped by trucks of multiple tiny wheels, can be posed down or up through the use of parts that clip on and off. Other optional parts allow for missiles to be launched from the cheeks, including clear red flames. A large base with arm supports the vessel and contains the batteries to power the LEDs that light the finished model. The lighting set includes wires and switch and connectors for the batteries and wires. The kit instructions are very explicit about how to add the lights. A couple of other neat features are figures of the five leading characters and clear red parts that can be placed around the nose and wingtips to reproduce the Firebird effect. Cartograph decals provide markings and stencils for the New God Phoenix, the smaller vehicles, and the figure's belts. For less experienced builders, 
Some of the markings are reproduced as stickers. I'm really excited to see this kit and I can't wait to start building it, but I've got to resist until after I finish the three projects I'm working on right now. Is that even possible? I never ask that question until after I've done it. Finally, here's Tacom's 135th scale Jag Tiger, the German tank destroyer built on the King Tiger chassis. Thank you, my worthy apprentice. Despite the fact that production was limited to less than 100 vehicles, the Jag Tiger has always been a popular modeling subject. This kit is the first of the Tacom Blitz brand, an initiative to produce more affordable, easier to build models that don't compromise on details or accuracy. Let's take a look. The lower hull incorporates the sides, sponson plates, and lower front panel, while the upper hull has the glasses, engine deck with engine grills, and the casemate sides and roof. Surface detail includes finely rendered cut and weld marks, recessed panel lines, and attachments. The driver's compartment hatches are separate and look to be poseable, although that's not indicated in the instructions. The rest of the body includes the rear panel, casemate rear with an opening for the rear hatch, and the front plate. Many of these parts show subtle rolled or cast steel texture. On the suspension, the road wheel arms are keyed for alignment, and the wheels show nicely molded rims and bolt heads, and have separate hubs. The idlers and drive sprockets look good too. Crisply molded Lincoln Link plastic tracks finish the running gear, and a jig is supplied to form the runs. Other nice features include one-piece fender skirts with thin edges, plastic tow cables, fine tools and attachments, and gun travel lock. The main gun is molded in halves with a separate muzzle, and a few basic parts of the mount are provided to support it. The mantlet features subtle cast texture. Optional mantlet parts differentiate early and late Jag Tigers. The instructions divide assembly steps into one and two to clarify the options. Other variant differences include front fenders and engine hatches, as well as smaller things. Photo etch brass is provided for engine screens. A small decal sheet and five view color diagrams give markings for five Jag Tigers, four early and one late. Based on engineering and part breakdown, this kit looks like it should go together easily. Look for reviews of it, the ME262, F35, and New God Phoenix in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can see more new products in the February issue on sale now. Check out that Raptor. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. I'm Elizabeth Nash, and we'll see you next time. After all, no one's ever really gone. See you around, kids. Thanks, Ultra Savers. <laughs> So, should we move on? We better, for Director Casey's sake. He's most displeased by our apparent lack of progress. Okay then, uh, here's something different. It's Academy's New God Phoenix. The Viet the Arg! Yup nub! <laughs> <laughs> so, should we move on? We better, for Director Casey's sake. He's very dis- I don't know. <laughs> I don't <care. laughs> <laughs> That's not how the force works. <laughs> nice reference. Thank you. <laughs> I submit. Yeah. <laughs>